So I'm assuming this is recording. I'm just doing an impromptu brew uh, using my gas stove, five gallon pot. I normally always brew uh, all grain. I'm going to fill this. I'm not going to fill it up because I'm not going to do a chill. I got water sitting outside because it's pretty cold out. It's late October in Canada here in Ontario. So I'm just going to do something, I guess, like a mini mash just for fun. I'm going to mill up some two grain, I guess, and uh, uh, put it in a bag. Then what's going in is I have uh, Cooper's IPA and uh, some Mutton's Medium. DME and potentially some dextrose if I feel like it. So that's what I'm going to get on to and I'm going to get a little bit of footage of it and be my first brewing one I guess I'm posting on YouTube and using my SJ Cam 4000 that came in. So there I have two pounds of crushed two row in one of those bags. I'm not even going to check the temperature of the water. I put a uh, gallon and a half in. I'm going to throw this in now. Little pre soak, make sure it all gets wet. Doesn't seem like much water in there, but again, it's a five gallon pail. Make sure it all gets wet. That's actually pretty warm already. I'm gonna check the temperature, even which I'll do. And uh, I'm even gonna throw all the little dust right in because it sugars might turn this down because it really goes down. Get my thermometer, check the temperature. I'm going to probably do a 45 minute rest. I'll sparge it with a bit. Then I'll add the DME, dextrose, and probably some Simcoe hops. That's the plan. And I'm just going to keep doing little updates as I do it. So again, this is just like a bit of a fun, quick brew because I got it work in the afternoon. But I uh, ended up getting a, I have like a stainless vegetable strainer I stuck in, so the bag's on that, so it wasn't directly heating. It's just slightly over uh, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I filled up the kettle, so I'll use that for sparge water. It's nice to have a gas stove, because you don't burn all the electricity, because it's extremely expensive in Ontario right now, especially mid-time of the day. So I'm just going to let this sit, apparently, 50 minutes, and then I will sparge it, and then I will add all my others bring it to a uh, boil maybe just for 15 minutes with some hops, add the can kit, uh, cool it down some outside, throw it on a yeast cake with uh, water I have sitting outside, cooling down as it is because it's probably, I don't know, 7 degrees, 6 degrees uh, uh, Celsius so, or centigrade, uh, mixed up country here with Fahrenheit and Celsius, so that's that, got a plate, there's my, uh, I don't even know what they're called, no CND thermometers works well and I just had a a ladle, what I have sitting around stainless. Okay, so my timer is going off to the one minute. Uh, I checked the temperature. It did hold pretty good at 150 something. Got uh, no idea how much barge water here, which is just slightly over 170 if it's not cooling down. Still, I got the lid off. It's smelling pretty good. Steaming up the camera. I don't got the waterproof thing on it. Put this crappy light on. So I will be having to put this down. I don't have a tripod yet. I will be getting one. So I'll be using the strainer. Be putting that in the strainer and then sparging it. Adding all my uh, DME and whatnot. Setting that off because it's annoying. And I got the line up here. The two bags. That'll go in at the end. It's Cooper's IPA. And I don't know about the dextrose. We'll see doesn't need it but if I want it really stronger I don't know how much this grain is going to give me it was two pounds two row that I milled up but it uh, looks and smells good so there you go again I normally don't brew like this I brew in the garage and uh, my next brewing video will be uh, in the garage when it's cold I'm sure and uh, my new uh, like what my metal brew uh, brew stand I made, three tier. So I'll just be lightly trying to spread this water to sparge. And again, I'm not calculating any really volumes too much. I'll get what I get. 
I'll just be resting it outside to cool down and again I'll be topping it with cool water to bring the temperature down. I do have plate chillers and immersion wilt chiller that I've made but I don't think I'll be needing it or I'm just not going to. One of the two. So I'm just going to be pouring this all in and this will just be a whatever brew just because I felt like it even though I do have beer in kegs but it's always fun to screw around and have a couple of these cans that are dented so I need to use them up of those Cooper's things hence why I'm using it so that's that I'm going to let that sit for a bit I'm going to turn the heat back on but I think I'm going to move the pot over to this burner here because it looks like it works better because I can get this gas stove used for $50 and it works well. I installed the gas myself too but I got my license and you can do that in your own home. So I'll be uh, bringing this up to a slight boil as I add in the, the DME before the steam kicks and you can't get it to mix in. So the two bags of DME is in so that's one kg of the uh, medium DME it was. So I checked the gravity now. This looks like about two and a half gallons, I'm guessing, because it's a five gallon pot. It was like 1058. So with the can kit, it should be at least a you know five and a half, six percent beer. I'll be getting it up to a boil and probably just be doing like a 10 and a five minute Simcoe hop edition and leave it outside. Maybe pitch some of the cold. Uh, water in it and if it doesn't cool down enough leave it till it does and if need be pitch it on the yeast cake tonight or if it cools down in time before I go to work but uh, as you see and here it is coming to a boil and I don't even know the these aren't super high power burners and this is an old stove but it does work and I have boiled uh, you know, a batch of like three and a half gallon beer on this before from extra runoff when I did a 10 plus gallon batch so here uh, this goes and I'll just I guess update it as it goes see how this works and when I post it up so I got hot water going in here for that uh, Cooper's can of IPA next to some dirty dishes oh well that's the way it is can't really see what's going on here I'll keep letting that cover so I have one ounce of Simcoe hops and these are pretty small pellets I've never not used to whoever did these must be a different supplier than normal and see what happens when you don't look out imagine if this thing was uh, full I'd be screwed so we definitely have a boil I would have the fan on but it's kind of loud it's kind of annoying you know for this video I'm not that worried put a bit of humidity in the house and don't forget about the water because you don't want that overfilling all over the floor so I should put a Maybe I'm going to do oh, 20 minute boil. It's more than unnecessary. But uh, see, once you get it boiling, like look at the, look at the flames down to like near nothing. And it's still going. I'll turn it up a bit. Like this stove, it's pretty much like it feels like it's full on or there's like a bit of adjustment, then it's almost near off. Uh, normally I always keep them uncovered. I don't want to lose too much of my liquid but so much of it is water because I did do that uh, mini mash uh, can't see if this is getting steamy because I don't see the picture on this right now because I guess I got a, a time saver off so let's be doing this and I'll add hops at uh, if I'm doing 20 10 5 or something like that maybe a half ounce of flame out kind of thing and I'm using the, I think I'm going to use a uh, one of those mesh bags again even though I normally just toss them in or I got a, a nice uh, bag when I do my bigger batches to stick it in, but I'll just throw it in that to try and make it a little cleaner. It is what it is, and it's going to be beer, and it's going to be time that I actually have one. Yeah, sure is. There, we got the hops all ready to go. I know this thing's stained, but don't worry, it'll be fine. This is actually, oh, don't want to turn it sideways, my lime beer this year pretty dark but uh, it's 
still get the zest there because uh, the zest and the boil and uh, in secondary. This is the second keg of it because the first one's already gone. And no bottles this year, sadly. But I got 12 minutes to go in a 20 minute boil, which I just decided I picked a number. You don't have to boil 60 minutes. Five minutes technically does sanitize, and I got the grains in there just for flavor instead of just using water. They did convert, you know, some. There's only two pounds. It is what it is, so that hop will be going in at uh, 10 minutes. I still have all this, and this is that uh, strainer I had under the bottom of the pot, so the grains weren't touching right in the bottom with the flame. Um, flame's going good there. You know, pretty easy, relaxed brew day. Uh, nice convenience to have a gas stove. Uh, you know, dead of winter and don't feel like going in the garage because it's not insulated or heated. Well, at least the one wall is not insulated and the door's not. Um, you have to wait a long time for the propane burners to heat up to actually get it warm in there. And if you just heat up your strike water and all that, you know, you're not there. But uh, if you want a quick brew, I can do one in the house, no problem. I got my uh, cooler mash tun still, even though I'm doing it on a three cable system right now in the garage. This is just... This is just for fun, really. Yeah, that's what happens when you get bored. Wow. Uh, so I added uh, probably about four minutes. The other rounds to Simcoe Hops. You can see it's boiling well. My 20 minute timer is almost going off. Nice thing about a gas stove. You shut the gas off. It cools down fairly quickly. That's annoying. Sorry. That one's annoying. So I'm just going to cover that let it sit keep the hops in there um, I am going to open the can of Cooper's IPA pour it in there mix it uh, use the ladle here to uh, put it in the can to rinse it out and put it back in and put it outside for a bit let it cool down top it up with some uh, cold water I have and then put it into a I think it's a six gallon carboy I got a yeast cake in yeah, it's like a, I think it's BRY97. It was a second re-fermentation on a beer that wasn't fermenting properly, which did take it down, so I'm happy. So I'm just going to play with it, because again, this is a bit of a hack beer, I call it, when you use a can kit and do all this stuff, but beer is beer. So, can't do it all this, because uh, I don't have hands free. So, sorry about uh, the turning of the video, and I was making food. So, that's sitting in the sink there. And I'm going to crack that thing open. Here we go. Outside my front door. As it might be. Yeah, I know not everyone's got a fridge on their front porch, but I do. The hand test. I can definitely feel it's pretty warm still. It's breezy but cool. This isn't the water I'm using. That's RO water. I could. I got some filtered city water which is very mineral enriched that I'll be putting in this. I'm going to go have a shower and let this sit some more. Uh, it's still warmer than skin, like by a fair bit. So I'll play this out by feel and ear. recording now so you don't have to speak. So this is my game plan. I got my bold wort. I got my cooled water and I got my yeast cake from a lap secondary fermentation that I added a, something to. I got star sand in the bottle on my funnel. So, step one, already rinsed with the uh, hot water. Spray it down with some no rinse sanitizer. I feel safe. So, with that, this is a six gallon carboy. This won't go in that good after, but. I'm going to put the cool water first and do a guesstimation on liquid level of what I have in there to what's in here. And this is filtered city hard water, so it's got lots of minerals in it. That's been dechlorinized. So you just pour them like that, you get extreme good aeration. Don't get too crazy with the level. I don't think that'll fit in there. I don't want to be way too convenient. Okay. 
okay, here's the pain in the ass with the box back. I don't really want to lose that shit. I wish I had a board. Fudge me, huh? Should have done this. Gonna lose some there. Not boiling. Try and keep the truck on the bottom. This is definitely going to steam because it's cool out and it's much warmer. It's a very concentrated wort now. We can't get in it in the DME and the mini mash of the tube row. Smells pretty good. Simcoe hops. I'll definitely be adding more water. This has been sitting outside for a good long time too. Like over an hour. I'm not really seeing any trub on the bottom. I'm seeing I'm pouring some in, but I don't really care. When I start to see it scummy on stuff. Oh there we go. That's pretty scummy there. Throw the bag back in there. See that? It's not that much. Six gallon carboy, five gallons would be up here. Uh, just enough to go in a keg is good with me. I'll loosen the funnel off. I'll call that a batch right there. I lost the saran wrap that was on. Let's give it a swirl around. I'm sure, all that aeration and pouring has been uh, mixed up pretty well. This is probably calling for a blow off tube. Because I'm not even going to check the gravity. I don't care because I guarantee it's going to be a 1055 to 1060 beer. Temperature probably a bit warm. But it'll cool down. I might even leave it outside overnight. Actually, it's not that warm in my house. I'll put her in the basement. I don't think it's low, low tube needed because it's not quite a bit of headspace. Very well aerated. A little on the warm side, but I guarantee it won't be bad beer. And uh, we'll update when I come back, and it's fermenting. Good for now. And here we go, less than five hours later. You can see it's really fermenting with that much on, and you can actually see the temperature in here. It, if you can't see that, I don't know, it's 12.8, 12.9 degrees Celsius. This carboy is sitting at eh, 20, so it cooled down, it's fermenting. You can hear the airlock, it's going very well. It's probably about a bit more than 5 gallons, so I'll be able to fill a keg. And should be a pretty decent beer, even though it's you know it's hacked, but Simcoe hops go a long way. And you can see the color in it. You can see the yeast moving pretty damn good, going up and down. And again, this is mostly a BRY 97, which apparently is a slow starter, but it's going when you're having a yeast cake. Say to my surprise, uh, this morning it's not even eight o'clock a.m. yet. And this is my cold storage, which is still sitting about 12 degrees. And as you can see that thing, it near blew out. I'm very much surprised. It's, uh, I'd say it's about uh, 17 and a half degrees right now. You can really see all the yeast moving around. It's definitely uh, doing a good job fermenting here. It's pretty surprising that it actually almost blew out, though. Again, I didn't check the gravity. I was just assuming it's between 1055 and 1060. That's a complete guesstimate, but I don't much care. It's going to be beer. And again, it was just a, a little board. You need to get rid of that can kit kind of thing. Make a beer for it. So, And this is, again, less than 24 hours, because 24 hours would be about 4 p.m. this afternoon, and this is not even 8 a.m. And she's pumping away. So uh, maybe let it go for a couple weeks, and maybe secondary it, and dry hop it, if, or just put it right in a keg. Who knows? We'll find out then. 
Maybe I'll even do a little thing about tasting, but I'm going to be posting this way before that. <laughs>